Is there a player in, in that Luke reminds you of? Not really. <laughs> I mean, I think he's a terrific player. I just can't think off the top of my head. Right behind that. Coach Greg Allman here with Newsday. Luke had two threes there right around the 12-minute mark. They had cut the lead to two. What did that do just to keep St. Louis at arm's length and give some cushion there? Well, it's important, but we had we had to go to him at, the, at that time because he's our clutch guy. You know, the, the most difficult, Russ Smith has, has grown so much as a basketball player, but he still has one thing left. And I tried to explain this to him at halftime, but he has a very difficult time. He's a distracted young man understanding this. I said, Russ, there's a lot better coaches than me in the other locker room. I said, but picture if I was in the other locker room. Do you think I would even let you breathe any time down the court? Do you think I would let you breathe? He says, no, coach, you would double me, you'd try me, you'd... And I said, so don't you think the other coaches are doing the same thing? So I said, all the great ones, from Michael Jordan to Kobe, they don't try to score 20 points in the first quarter. They get everybody else the ball, and they let the game come to him when the other team fatigues and things open up. So his last lesson is to play like he did in the second half and not come out. He, he doesn't understand the scouting of the other teams. See, he's our Michael, our Kobe. But he doesn't get that those guys in the other locker room are a lot smarter than me. He, he doesn't get it. So we're going to give him shock treatment on Monday. <laughs> right up front. Coach Danny Morales of the Valencia Voice. You called a timeout there once St. Louis took the lead uh, early on in the second half. What, what did you tell your guys? I just what? wanted to get the right shot to the right person in, in two or three options. Anything else? <clears throat> On our far left. Coach, why did you think this game would be ugly just based on the way St. Louis played and, and did, do you have to change your style because of that? You know, the NCAA, the one thing I've known throughout the years being in this business is people get very conservative and they talk about the, I've always felt, you know, you hear the expression defense wins championships. A lack of offense keeps you from winning a championship. All these teams can guard. And it's really, really important. We beat Michigan and Wichita State and the teams before that, and we were a very good defense because of our offense. We didn't win because of our, our defense. Every team can play defense at, at this stage. So you've got to have great offense to win, and you've got to really execute, make free throws, do smart things. And so it's really the offense that's going – if you watch Florida-Pittsburgh, you knew how that game was going to be played. And the better defensive team, both teams were going to play great defense, but the team with the best offense was going to win the game. So we looked at St. Louis. We knew it was going to be this type of game. If you play a Cincinnati, if you play a Pittsburgh, you know what type of game it's going to be. VCU couldn't speed up St. Louis. And so we knew that we, this was going to be this type of game. So we had to be as good as they were defensively, take away the three, and wear them down with pick and rolls because they, they take the wings away. Standing up in the aisle. Hey, Coach, excuse me if I missed this in the opening, but um, did you talk about Chris Jones yet? Chris Jones, I, Chris Jones is playing terrific basketball. Um, he, he's... The only thing he's struggling with right now is we, we change a lot defensively based on what we do offensively, and he's struggling a little bit with that, and, he, and he's just struggling picking it up. Outside of that, he gives us big steals. He's playing well. And I told him in one situation, I said, you know, Chris, when, when teams trap you, you've got to take on the bigger guy, go by him, and then make the pass. You can't back up and then try to split it because then you're five, now you're 5'10 trying to be 5'5". Five, five. So he did that. You know, once he, he lost the ball there, he took the guy on, made some good plays, made big steals. He's playing great basketball for us right now. It's just he's, he's adjusting to all these multiple defenses. And, you know, this is a – the past three years have been one of the more wonderful experiences in my life in terms of the quality of young men I'm coaching. But this is a difficult team to coach, very difficult. Well, you already know those. You know, it, it's tough to fathom for all of us that, you know, I, I, I didn't grow up with a privileged life, but compared to Chris, it was very much privileged. So it's tough in recruiting when, 
when you go around and, and you see these young people and the danger of the areas they grow up in, um, it's very difficult on them. You know, uh, Wayne Blackshear, you know, saw his dad killed. You know, so it's, it's, it's very, very difficult for them. And uh, it, it takes a lot of nurturing for them to become young men. And Chris has come from where he was light years in the type of person he's becoming. And that's the joy of college coaching. I mean, look, we all teach fundamentals. We all teach the game. And, uh, but the joy of college coaching is the nurturing of young people. It's really fun to see Russ and Luke and VT grow up into young men that are they're really wonderful people. Any other questions for Coach Patino? We'll take one more in the front row. Coach, your defense held them without a three-pointer, and you talked that that was an emphasis. Is that a stat you allow your defense to kind of hang their hat on, or is it on to the next one? Well, we went to a different type of zone, almost like a 1-1-3, one, one, to make sure there were no bumps where they could pop out and get a three. And what we would give up at times is maybe a high post pass, and drive, but we were, going to t we were going to smother the three. I looked at both. This team reminds me of Colorado State last year. They're extremely well coached at all phases of the game. And we felt that if we gave up the three, we could get beat tonight. So we won't take that away. Now, that doesn't mean we, we're going to be successful. We're just successful tonight. But we weren't going to give up the three. We were going to hang our hat on taking away the three-point shot. And VT, in crucial situations, uh, you know, I, I looked up. I said, I said to my assistant, I said, was that VT blocking those shots? You know, he really got up, timed it beautifully, and, and we really need him to play well down the stretch. He's playing terrific. And Chris Jones, and now if I can just get Russ to understand what the other coach is saying in the locker room, you know, it, 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 we, we'll come of age and, and move on and be very successful. But that's, um, that's something he hasn't grasped. That's the last hurdle for Russ Smith. Thank you, Coach Thank Patino. You. Good luck down the road.